Hello, everybody. My name is Tina Arduno Calderon. I am Gabrielino Tongva and Ventureño Chumash. And uh, we are happy to be here with you tonight. I'm going to start an opening prayer, and I invite you to join me. So we're going to start by turning to the north. We call Tume. This is the place where life begins. The snows and the medicine waters. It's represented by eagle and bear, who teach us how to take care of our young and protect them. We acknowledge our ancestors, Yararkomokre Hanuk Vatam. And as we turn to the east, we call Komi. This is where the sun comes up and new growth is encouraged. It's the area designated to youth. And it's also represented by the deer and the hawk. And they teach us so much about generosity. We acknowledge our ancestors of this area, Yarar Komokre Hanuk Vatam. And to the south, we call Katame. This is the place for middle age. It's where the knowledge is housed. And it's represented by the owl and the snake. Both of them teach us about relationships. As the snake keeps her belly always upon Mother Earth, she teaches us how to care for her and always be connected. We honor the elders and the ancestors in this area. And to the west, we call Paime. This is where my people come from. We believe we're the Western gatekeepers. This area is designated to old age. It's where the wisdom is kept. And it's represented by the dolphin and the raven. And both of them teach us about staying committed and about treating everybody as if they were a family and protecting. We honor the ancestors of this area. And you can turn around. And I'm going to go through the West Gates into the heavens we call Tokupad. This is where our ancestors reside. This is where I raise my hands and I ask for their guidance because they too have lived through this. I really want to thank all of you for uniting to be the voice of the children and the families being detained. We too live through this. And it doesn't matter if you call them detention camps, concentration camps, boarding schools, slave quarters, mission enslavement facilities, no matter what label you put on these places, they were all meant to control and dehumanize and break the spirit of the people that are thought to be less than. Less than the colonizers, less than human. In our culture, we have respect for all, all of creation. That's what's necessary to live in harmony and balance. We are equal to all people, to nature, to animal, to the elements. All of creation is one. And what we do to them, we do to ourselves. Because every action has a reaction. So thank you for standing here to give respect for those families, those families that are being ripped apart. We must act responsibility responsibly and we must treat them with love and respect. In my language we would say love and respect. So finally I will conclude my portion with a prayer song. 
And this is actually a traveling song in my language because it's for those, I think it's necessary, for those that lived through this and then in the end didn't make it. So many of us have relatives that didn't make it. So they are in spirit world. So this song is for them, to let them know they will always be in our hearts. Blessings to each and every one of you. Tehov Kopo Ami. My name is Lydia Ponce. I am Mayo, Sinaloa, Mexico. I am Quechua, Peru, Payeta, Peru. I am adopted by my sister elder, Gloria Arianas, who could not be here tonight, but she sends her love, she sends her prayers for help, health, and protection. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Calderon family, Joe, and honor. My humble heart, um, it can't be broken because this is what community looks like. When we show up for one another, this is the real deal right here. Whatever sacrifice it took for you to be here today, half of the journey, half of the struggle and the challenge is getting here. And now that we're here, we must honor all of our ancestors united in the spirit world, bringing us to this moment of truth, of strength, of encouragement, inspiration, loyalty, and truth. It's an honor to stand here before you. I'm gonna just speak for about another minute and a half, but I'm gonna share with you the desperation of other people telling lies of who they say or think that we are and we're not. We need to all be better relatives from all four directions, from all four nations. The medicine wheel is four colors and not one color is more important than the other. They are touching within that circle, that community, that we move together forward, that white, black, red, and yellow are united in that medicine wheel, and that's what makes it medicine. We need each other. We cannot forget that we are connected, and that includes the tree nation, that includes the rock nation, that includes our winged, our finned, and our four-legged, and as Grandmother Gloria says, the creepy crawlers. I just need to make sure that you know that this moment in time is that it's never again is now. I, I think that phrase is so poignant because we've been here before, but it didn't break us because our resilience is in our DNA. We're here today to acknowledge how important we are to each other. I am you and you are me and we are each other. We are in the catch. If I respect and love myself, I must love and respect you. There is no other choice. So I'm going to say that in closing, when we rest tonight, you meditate, or you say your prayers and you give thanks. 
just know that I know, and you forget sometimes that your ancestors come and kiss you on the face, on the forehead, and whisper in your ear and tell you how to go about your next day. Just know and be still and breathe in deep. And when you exhale, wiggle your toes and know that you are love and you are loved and you are going to share that. No matter how you step, how quickly or slow, you'll get there and we'll get there together. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the Korean Resource Center for calling us together through drumming. Thank you to Tina Ordino Calderon, uh, Gabrielino Chimash Elder, and Lydia Ponce, uh, Mayo Quechua Community Organizer, for inviting us to honor the land that we are gathered on. My name is Sean Mira, and I am one of your co-hosts for this evening. And I am Maya, and the other co-host. Um, and I just like, we just like to thank everyone for choosing to be here, whether you are here in person or whether you are watching us online. Thank you. We've chosen to be here because we are disgusted by policies that have had a violent and fatal impact on our world. With the youth of Little Tokyo's Casa Hewa, please join us in a moment of silence and respect to honor those who have given their lives in seeking safety. Never again, never again. Thank you. We are here together in solidarity. We, here, we are here to share stories of resistance and protest. And we are here to demand the end to illegal detention and family separation. As a Japanese American community still healing from our own wartime incarceration, we say no to illegal concentration camps. So with that, you're going to hear from a number of people this evening. And so to kick off the, the, um, the words, uh, we're really, really grateful to have this space here at the Japanese American National Museum. And with that, I'd please like to welcome to the microphone the president and CEO of the Japanese American National Museum, Ann Burroughs. Wow. This is extraordinary, looking at all of you from here. When we, were, when we first got together and thought about coming together to think about what Little Tokyo could do, I don't think that we quite imagined that we would have so many people here. So I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for to, to all of you. On behalf of Janum, on behalf of the Japanese American National Museum, I'd like to welcome you all. And I also bring very special greetings to all of you from Norm Mineta, who is the chair of our Board of Trustees. And many of you know that he himself was incarcerated as a child in Heart Mountain. And he, he brings, I bring his blessings to all of you and his greetings and his good wishes. And he, he so hoped that he could have been here with all of you tonight. So, it's no accident that we're gathering on this place. We have been given moving words, moving accounts of the power of place, the power of memory, the power of ancestry. But this place bears very special significance because it was on this ground, this very ground where you're all standing. The Japanese Americans from Los Angeles in the Second World War, gathered to board buses to go to detention centers on the way to concentration camps. Where you standing, there were buses lining the street. People were gathered here with their belongings, with their children, with the tags that identified, with a, very, with a number that identified each one of them. 
So we're standing on hello ground. There's enormous power in place, as we all know. There's enormous power in memory. And I often think, how do you name power? One of the most powerful impetuses for me in my world is the impetus of democracy, the purity, the purity of democracy. So when I think about this plaza and I think about what it represents, for me it represents, it, it represents democracy and it represents the aspirations coming from great tragedy, the aspirations of what we can be as a nation. So welcome to Janum's Democracy Plaza. We're gathered here, all of us, to add our voice to the growing outcry that Fort Sill is to be used as a prison for children. These children who fled their homes in countries south of the United States to seek asylum, to seek safety, and to seek protection. We're here to raise our voice against the inhumane enforcement of asylum policies that criminalize fear and desperation, that suspend due process. We're here to voice our protest against the policies that separate children from their parents, the policies that imprison them without meeting standards of care, a policy that history will surely remember as a crime against humanity. We're here to stand in solidarity with Suru for Solidarity, the elders and camp survivors who were themselves incarcerated as children, who made a pilgrimage last weekend to stand at Fort Sill on behalf of all of us. The elders, those self-same elders who inspired us when they faced down orders to disperse, when they faced down those orders with profound dignity. The incarceration of Japanese Americans during World War II was wrong and the US government has acknowledged as much. The Civil Liberties Act apologized for the grave, the grave injustice and blamed it on race prejudice, war hysteria, and a failure of political leadership. To perpetrate a similar wrong today against young people who are guilty of nothing more than seeking safety and a better life, who are guilty of nothing more than having been forcibly separated from their parents. It's unacceptable and it must be stopped. The Japanese American National Museum was founded by individuals who knew that it was imperative to prevent what happened to them and their families during World War II from ever happening again. The use, the use of Fort Sill as a prison for children shows that without action from those who understand the failures of history, and without action from those who have the courage to look back into the eye of that history and learn from its mistakes, this country's leadership will continue to chart a course towards tragedy. Fort Sill has a long history as a place of imprisonment. Long before World War II, it was a Native American boarding school where indigenous children were forcibly removed from their parents and communities as part of the government's efforts to assimilate them. They were kidnapped in order to be assimilated. It served as a prisoner of war camp for members of the Apache Nation as part of their forced removal from the Southwest in the late, 19, in the late 1800s. During World War II, 700 Issei were imprisoned there. Of those 700, 90 were Buddhist priests. And of the 700, three prisoners lost their lives two of whom were shot by guards. And for that location to be used again as a concentration camp to imprison children defies belief. Migrant children are among the most vulnerable among us and should not be detained un under any circumstances. And to lock them up in a place where so much injustice, where so much tragedy, where so much pain has already happened threatens to add just another tra tragic chapter to history. Though few stood up for Japanese Americans in the 1940s, the Japanese American National Museum is steadfast in its support of any community now being targeted. So it's a privilege. It's a privilege to stand with all of you. It's a privilege. It's a privilege that we can all stand together, that we have the freedom to stand together. 
to be here with all of you, to have organized during the last week for today. It's been a galvanizing and powerful reminder for those of us at Janum, for why Janum exists, and for why we are so fiercely committed to the work that we do. If we don't use the power of our voice as an institution to stand up for what is right, to stand up for other communities that are being unjustly targeted, and to recognize that never again is now, history will be repeated. And history does not shout much louder than it is now. So what better place than for us to come together, to add our voice to that history, to shout down that history, than on this ground, on this place that holds so much power, this place that holds so much memory. Thank you and be welcome. Thank you. We want to say that this is not just one event. This is just the beginning of a year of many activities and many events that our community is committed to making. Different organizations will be doing different projects, different programs. You hear about those at the end. But we want you to know that this is not just one protest. This will go on until the camps that they're being used for children has stopped, and that is gone. So we are committed to that as a community. I see many uh, in, the, in the audience, in the crowd, that were children in camp. And uh, you know, we thank you for being here. And you are people that are speaking for us because you know what the experience is like. And we thank you for being here. We represent East West Players. JACL Pacific Southwest District. Japanese American Cultural and Community Center. The Japanese American National Museum. Kizuna. Little Tokyo Service Center. Manzanar Committee. Nikkei for Civil Rights and Redress. Nikkei Progressives. Tuesday Night Project. Tuna Canyon Detention Station Coalition. Vigilant Love. Visual Communications. We represent groups and organizations in the Japanese American and Little Tokyo community that believe it is important for us to raise our voices against the White House's plans to use Fort Sill and any other former concentration camps and facilities as detention centers for migrant children and to protest the inhumane enforcement of immigration policies and practices of ICE. <laughs> We are survivors and families of those incarcerated in America's concentration camp. So we know what concentration camps are, and these detention centers are exactly that, modern day concentration camps. We believe in the importance of learning from history, and we know that Fort Sill was a place of repeated forced removal, the detention of children, and family separation. So long before 700 Issei were separated from their families and detained during World War II, 300 members of the Apache Nation were incarcerated at Fort Sill. Long before Kanesaburo Oshima, distraught at being separated from his 11 children, was shot and killed by a guardsman. Geronimo died while imprisoned at Fort Sill. Long before the government's plan to house 14,000 immigrant children here, native children from many different tribes were separated from their families and sent to Fort Sill boarding schools. We know firsthand what xenophobia feels like. We know what inhumane conditions feel like. We know what illegal detention and unconstitutional acts look like. 
We know what family separation feels like and the ongoing trauma it creates. And we know what it's like to be called a threat to national security because of our ancestry or how we worship. And we know what it's like to be branded invaders who threaten this nation's way of life by those seeking political advantage. This government has not learned from its own mistakes. In spite of the conclusions by this government that the incarceration of Japanese Americans was based on race prejudice, war hysteria, and a failure of political leadership, these same factors are at play today in the scapegoating of immigrants. We know that there are more than 13,000 children in custody under the Department of Health and Human Services. Many sleeping on concrete floors with no soap, toothbrushes, or adequate health and medical care. Tragically, seven children have died while detained by ICE. We know that thousands of children were forcibly separated from their parents and taken long distances away. And although the government was given a court order and deadline to reunite them with their families, they say it may take two years to track the children down. We know that our asylum laws grant refugees the right to apply for asylum with the ability to stay in the U.S. until their hearing. But this government has turned people away. Instead of finding a safe haven, those seeking relief from violence and poverty find themselves criminalized and terrorized at the border. We must speak out not only because of our community's experiences during World War II, but also because we see the conditions of these detention centers for what they are a human rights violation. We thank the Tsuru for Solidarity Group for organizing 300 people from across the country and locally at Fort Sill last Saturday to protest at the former camp. We are inspired and proud of the camp survivors who risked arrest to express their anger at the use of Fort Sill as yet another detention center for children. We stand in solidarity with other Japan towns in San Francisco and San Jose who are protesting today for an end to the suspension of due process and unjust detentions. Never again is now an end to family separation and the immediate reunification of all families. Never again is now an end to the ill treatment of those seeking asylum and protection. Never again is now. An end to the inhumane conditions at the detention camps. Never again is now. Can I hear it three more times? Never again is now. Never again is now. Never again is now. Never again is now. Representing much larger communities, you just heard from Nikki Sudden, Kanji Sahara, Dan Maeda, Rick Noguchi, Kerry Morita, Joe Saronkio, Nancy Takayama, Bruce Ember, Richard, Richard Katsuda, Francis Collado, Stephanie Dahara, Sahara Prasada, Darren Mooko, Kathy Masoka, and Tracy Kato Kiriyama. Representing much larger communities who are speaking out and representing. Can we hear it for all these larger communities that are coming Ooh. together? Up next, um, this past weekend, people from across the country gathered in Fort Sill to protest its reactivation. And we are so lucky that that contingent included members from Little Tokyo and that they are here to share back on, um, on that protest. So up next, we'll have Fort Sill, folks.
we good to go? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Welcome all, and thank you so much for being here tonight. Standing behind me are Karen Ishizuka, Ruth Wakabayashi Kondo, Atlas Winfrey, Alan Kondo, Reverend Duncan Williams, Leslie Ishii, and Martha Nakagawa. My name is Joy Yamaguchi, and I am a Yonsei, fourth generation descendants of survivors of Japanese American concentration camps. I am also a member of Nikkei Progressives. I am honored to be speaking on behalf of this powerful group of activists behind me. Last weekend, all of us traveled from Los Angeles to Lawton, Oklahoma, to Fort Sill, as part of a collective called Tsuru for Solidarity. Yeah. <laughs> Tsuru is the Japanese word for crane, and for us, Tsuru was a symbol of hope and the way we can rise up as a community. We brought with us tens of thousands of origami Tsuru, folded by people across the country. Throughout the weekend's protests, we held them high and proud, like you can see them holding them behind me. We all had our own personal reasons for going. Many of us are descendants of camp survivors. Many of us have worked or lived in communities that are impacted by today's immigration policies. Reverend Duncan Williams felt compelled on behalf of the 90 Buddhist priests that were incarcerated during World War II at Fort Sill. Not all of us initially identified as activists. Not all of us were able to speak with our families about these histories. But all of us went because we have a personal connection to the history of Japanese American incarceration during World War II. We had to go and be the allies and accomplices that our families did not have when they were forcibly removed from their homes because they looked like the so-called enemy. We were compelled to leverage our privilege as Japanese Americans to fight for those who are currently struggling under these white supremacist colonial imperial incarceration systems. So this past Saturday morning, we held a press conference in Oklahoma to say never again is now. We stood to say we will not stand idly by while more children were incarcerated there at Fort Sill. Six brave Japanese American survivors of concentration camps, all in their 70s and 80s, all who had been children or infants in camps themselves, stood proudly holding the suru outside of the now infamous Fort Sill gates. They stood there and shared their testimony of how the camp impacted them as children and how they felt compelled to come back to defend these children over 75 years later. The leaders of Fort Sill did not want us there. A few minutes into our press conference, a red-faced, angry military police interrupted one of our survivors speaking her testimony. He yelled, you have to move, now. But no one moved. We stood firm, a line of intergenerational survivors, descendants of survivors and allies, who said no not on our watch. As that military police yelled and screamed that we could not protest on Fort Still, we stood steadfast. Our elders were prepared to be arrested, to put their bodies on the line, to stand up for this generation of children like they needed someone to stand up for them. Satsuki Ina, who was born at Thule Lake, one of the concentration camps, firmly stated, they're wanting to remove us. We have been removed too many times. We are not leaving. <laughs> Ultimately, there were no arrests, but our elders had made their point. No more incarceration of children on our watch. Never again is now. We later gathered in a nearby park 
in solidarity with many other people of color groups from Oklahoma who reached out to us when they heard that we were coming. Leaders from the American Indian Movement, Indian Country, had met with us the night before to break bread, and we were our protection for the day of the protest, offering their support to staying at the perimeter and the crowd of the rally in case of counter-protesters or violence. Michael Tobom and Duncan Williams here blessed the crowd and the children together in an interfaith ceremony. Many of these AIM folks were survivors of the Fort Sill concentration of Apache tribal members and of the boarding schools that were created for cultural genocide by the United States. We were also joined by the Brown Berets, Dream Act Oklahoma, Oklahoma ACLU, CARE, Council for Islamic Relations Oklahoma, Black Lives Matter, Detention Watch, and our Densho um, organization. Reverend Sherry Dickerson of Black Lives Matter reminded our white allies that day to step up and support, not to co-op the work being done, but step up and support because people of color are tired of this fight. And I say this also to my Japanese American fellow um, community members, it's time for us to step up as well. Time to give our time, our money, and shed that complacency. And I was reminded, the systems that have created these concentration camps of today do not want us to work together. White supremacy and those that enact its violence, including the US government, do not want us to acknowledge our collective strength. But we were there last weekend and today to do that. Because we are powerful together. Together, we can melt ice, we can raise hell when people are being locked up, whether in detention centers run by CBP or prisons like the one down the street. I think all of us came back this weekend feeling inspired and exhausted and beginning to heal. So many of us still weep because we still carry the trauma from our Obachans and our Ojichans, from our families and our ancestors who were locked up because of their race. Incarceration based on race is still constantly happening, especially to black and brown communities. This trauma is inherited, and we cannot stand by while so many more ch generations of children face that future. So we take that pain, and we are ready to fight for a better future, not just for our own communities, but for all people and for all children. And I would like to introduce now Leslie Ishii to speak a few more words on behalf of the larger Suter for Solidarity Committee. Thank you, everyone. Again, I'm Leslie Ishii, Sansei Han Yose, descendant of many Doka survivors. I have some updates for us. We've been contacted by organizers in Oklahoma, and there is a very large direct action being planned for July. They want us back next month. Sudu for Solidarity has been helped to organize this action. We are hoping to take a delegation of Jap Japanese Americans and allies back to Oklahoma for this action. We will be announcing details on our Facebook page as soon as information becomes public. Also, Thank you to those who folded cranes. We asked for 10,000 for Crystal City, Texas, and what became our direct action in Oklahoma, and we got 30,000 cranes. They are such a powerful symbol of transformation and liberation. But now we are asking for 125,000 Sudo as we are also heading to Washington, May of 2020. Are you with us? Are you with us? Are you with us? So if you are interested, we need to know. Please get involved. Please contact our Facebook page or Sudo for Solidarity at gmail.com. Also, we are starting a website so that we can share more excerpts, more of your postings, keep you updated on these actions. Because we need you with us. Are you with us? Yes. yes. Joy. And I just wanted to conclude 
with a statement written by from the, some of the Suter for Solidarity organizers. Oh, sorry, <laughs> let just pause. I wrote this down. Sorry, I got nervous. Lastly, I have to give a heartfelt thank you to all of you who contributed to our GoFundMe campaign. Thank you. Your support made this direct action possible, and it was also impactful and highly effective because of your contributions. Of course, we also thank Nikkei Progressives, Janum, JACCC, Little Tokyo Service Center, all the camp pilgrimages that sent representatives to this action as well. And of course, all of you allies and our beloved Japanese American community, thank you for your support now and going forward. Thank you, Joy. Just wanted to share one last thing from the organizers. This suru was folded by a stranger with hope and intention. But as Reverend Duncan Williams said at the protest rally in Oklahoma, how do paper cranes fly? He said that the classic Buddhist idea is that birds need two wings, one of wisdom and one of compassion to fly. That's what we're figuring out as a community of Japanese Americans and allies now at these gatherings and in May when we go to DC to make that national statement together. How do we make paper cranes fly? How do we lift children and families out of confinement? So thank you again for being here today and coming back to Fort Sill briefly with us. Um, I hope you don't forget Fort Sill. I hope this is not the last action you take. And I'm excited to see you all out here again. Um, if we're up for it, I want to do one of the chants that we did in Oklahoma. It's very simple. We're just going to do it a few times together. And it goes, no ban, no wall, no camps. No, no, no ban, no wall, no camps, no, no, together, no ban, no wall, no camps, no, no. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Oh, we're going to go. Fort Sill, shut it down. 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 They were using a word just now. I want to spell it out real quick. Are y'all cool learning a little Japanese? Tsuru, T S U R U. One more time. T S U R U. Can you repeat after me? Tsuru. 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 That means crane. So what we're going to ask you to do is go on your social media and look up Tsuru for Solidarity. Say that with me. Tsuru for Solidarity. One more time. Tsuru for Solidarity. And we recognize that as a community, we are folding these cranes so that we ourselves can be more mindful of our own histories, but also those who are directly impacted now. And so coming up next, I'm really excited to bring up this brother who is a refugee immigrant whose family fled China and Cambodia when he was five years old. After making a few mistakes in his youth, Billy served 21 years in prison and has been released but detained, detained by ICE several times. He is still under deportation orders. Please welcome to the stage, Billy Tang. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Billy, and I feel so fortunate and blessed to be here uh, amongst you all tonight. I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of my community, a community that lives in fear because of unjust immigration policies that threaten to tear our family, our community apart through detentions and deportations. I'm here because I do not want to witness any more suffering in our communities. I want to briefly share my story. As mentioned earlier, I am a refugee from Cambodia. At age of one, my father was killed by Khmer Rouge soldiers when they took over, uh, took control of the country. His crime was being a scholar and speaking Chinese. My mother, my older brother, and I were sent to labor camp. Between the age of one and four, I experienced famine, neglect, and sickness that nearly cost me my life. At the age of five, my family and I fled 
the war-torn country and immigrate to America as a refugee. Growing up, I struggled with a sense of identity. I didn't know at the time that the trauma I experienced during my early year was affecting the decision-making process. During my teens, I sought acceptance and felt a sense of belonging with my peers. That led me to gang involvement eventually. I started making bad decisions. At the age of 19, I made a terrible choice to commit a crime that got me a life sentence where I spent 21 years in prison. Upon my release, I was paroled to a detention center. I was released four months after, only to be re-detained one and a half years later. During my time, period of uh, re-entering society, I um, did everything I can uh, to be a productive member of society. Uh, I was grateful for my second chance, and I just wanted to be amongst the community to uh, contribute and to um, continue my path of redemption and to uh, be here for my family to support and, you know, to um, be with my aging mother as, as she aged and realizing that the harm that I caused, I just wanted to uh, be a support system for my family like they supported me during my time in prisons. Um, my second detention was six and a half months. During the six and a half months, nearly I and nearly other Cambodian refugees were flown across states, shackled and chained. One of the persons that was with us at the time was an 83-year-old grandpa. We were often kept in a room, a concrete room box for over eight hours. The longest was 25 hours that we experienced without a bed, uh, without proper nutrition, uh, hygiene. It was heartbreaking to see that a grandfather, you know, this is somebody, um, father, you know, this is a human being um, that was sleeping on a concrete floor with his uh, health conditions. And we went through this whole process of from one detention to another. Uh, during my six and a half months, I've, well, we went through four detention facilities. Detention center is a very hopeless and, um, and a despair environment. Uh, everybody there really felt like there was a lost cause. Either they were getting deported or um, they didn't feel like they have a, a, a realistic chance of uh, reuniting with the family. And that was very heartbreaking for me to see, uh, to see people willingly um, give up the fight. And so I made a point that if I did get out, I would uh, share the story, share about the condition of uh, detention center, um, share about what people go through, the struggles. And everybody uh, struggles there, whether you're black, brown, yellow, um, white. We're in a situation that, um, that just that uncertainty is, uh, is tormenting for us. And I just want to share that, um, living through that personally. And uh, I know that a lot of you know, brothers, um, fathers, grandfathers, sisters, mothers, children that are in there right now that are struggling. And uh, just thinking about that is very heartbreaking. And, Nobody should have to go through that, right? So, uh, so I'm here just to advocate for community, my communities for uh, formerly incarcerated. I'm here to advocate for second chance, uh, for hope and redemption. 
And, you know, I'm here to say that this is my home also. I belong here. And I want to be a part of this community. And today I stand in solidarity with you all. And I want to thank everybody for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story. You're right, you do belong here. And thank you. Um, up next, we'll be having um, Ruben Fuguaro Guevara, a native Angelino Chicano musician, cross cultural activist, playwright, poet, and author, who will be sharing a poem translated by art historian and educator Maria Isabel Ramos. Thank you, thank you. It's incredible to be here. I was honored, I was asked by Nikkei Progressives to, uh, to write a poem for the occasion. It's a haiku. It's called For the Souls of the Children. Mommy, Daddy, help. Frozen cries melt the cage. Please, I'm dying. Concentration camps, children are expendable. Their lives don't matter. Young souls don't forget. They remember their laughter, their nightmares, their hopes. The world breathes their dreams. Songs sung, carried by angels. The silence listens. A mantra begins. Sacred atoms sing the truth. Seven children dead. Souls of dead children, our conscience will heal your wounds. Your innocence lives. Por las almas de los niños. Mamá, papá, ayuda. Llantos congelados se derriten en la jaula. Por favor, me estoy muriendo. Campos de concentración. Los niños son prescindibles. Sus vidas no importan. Las almas jóvenes no olvidan. Se acuerdan de sus risas sus pesadillas, sus esperanzas. El mundo respira sus sueños. Canciones cantadas, cargadas por ángeles. El silencio escucha. Inicia una mantra. Átomos sagrados cantan la verdad. Siete niños muertos. Almas de niños muertos. Nuestra conciencia sanará sus heridas. Sus inocencias viven. Felipe Gómez Alonso. Presente. María Juárez. Presente. Marily Juárez. Presente. Jacqueline Cal Maquín. Presente. Presente. Juan de León Gutiérrez. Presente. Presente. Oscar Alberto Martínez Ramírez. Presente. Presente. Carlos Gregorio Hernández Vázquez. Presente. Presente. Valeria. Valeria Martínez Ramírez. 
presente. presente. Thank you. Gracias. Can we please some more show some more appreciation? Before we move on to the final speaker for the evening and then the final per the performance to close out the night, can I ask everyone to just take a deep breath in and breathe out? One more time in community with everyone. Breathe in and out. And then I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes if you're comfortable on this last one. And I'm gonna ask you to breathe in and then let it out with a noise to assure yourself that you're here. One last time, breathe in. And out with a sound. <sighs> Our final speaker for this evening, Mi Yamamoto is a third generation Japanese American transgender lawyer and activist. She was born in a concentration camp in Poston, Arizona in 1943. Can we please hear it for Mia Yamamoto? Thank you. Thank you for the honor of coming out here and being able to address all of you because I'm just absolutely proud, honored to be here. I am so happy to see all of you and I'm so happy because you showed up. You showed up, you stood up, you spoke out, you're still speaking out and you're still fighting back because that's what matters because I want to go back home because you're all here and talk to the people who didn't come, who didn't bother and ask them if they have adjusted to injustice because complacency is complicity. We're not going to be a part of it. We've got to stand up and say we're not a part of this. We're not a part of family separation. We're not a part of criminalizing immigrants. Down with ICE. We need to abolish ICE. We need to put a cap on Homeland Security because immigrants are some of the best people I know and every single one of us is derived from immigrants. And let me talk a little bit about concentration camps. We can't look at what's happening in those concentration camps and be still and be silent. We have to stand up and do exactly what we're doing. We have to stand up. We got to march. We got to protest. We got to vote. We got to go out and get everybody in the vote. We got to get rid of the fascists in our government, the white supremacists and the Nazis in the White House. They don't belong there. They're not part of America. They're part of the worst of us. I hate to say this because I know that some of you are imbued with the whole thing, but I'm telling you, Donald Trump is the ugly face of unbridled capitalism because greed, ego, are drive motivators for things like more power, more property, more profit. There are some kinds of more that are never going to be enough. It is evil. It is wrong. We have to be here for each other. Everything we do for our own little community, whatever it is, is meaningless unless if it helps advance all of society. What we do has to benefit all of us. And that includes all the people that nobody seems to care about. There are no throwaway people. And that includes the people in prison. That includes all the people behind bars, whether or not they think it's for a good reason. None of these immigrants should be treated this way. It's been pointed out that we treat prisoners of war better than we are treating the people in the detention centers across the border. It is wrong as a violation of every human principle, including the Geneva Convention. They should be taking these jerks. I'm not going to need some of my... <laughs> no more vulgarity here. <laughs> it's kind of a mixed audience. I don't want to be a bad influencer. So I won't tell them what I think they are. They're a bunch of jerks, twerps. Man, they're at least Nazis, and we have to get rid of them. But we have to stand up and say that that's not our values. We stand with the immigrants. We care about We are in solidarity with every single parent, every single child who's being taken into custody and is being treated the way they're being treated. We have a legacy. We are Japanese Americans, and we got put in camp for our race. The same thing is happening now. We can't let it happen now. And you're right. Never again. It's happening again. And you're right, and it can't happen again. And why is that? Here and now, it is happening again. So never again? Yeah. Say it again. Never again. Yeah. Happening now. Never again. It's happening now. And are we going to let that happen? No. no. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mia Yamamoto. Can we get another cheer? Woo! And last... <laughs> Woo! 
last but not least, we have Ray Fukuda. Ray Fukuda is a transgender Latinx Nikkei musician and community planner with Little Tokyo Service Center and will be playing guitar. Woohoo! Hi, everyone. Um, this is a song I wrote. It's called Omamori. It also uh, means amulet. And um, thank you for Nikkei Progressives for inviting me tonight. Time for Ray Fukuda. Woo! 
So with that, we're coming to a close for the evening, but there is still time for you to check out what's happening around. But before we head out, I would invite you to think about, to, to introduce yourself to some new people tonight, to make some new connections. I would also invite you to think about what it means to look back on our own histories as a way to better build language and frameworks so that we can center those who are the most vulnerable and most affected. So we're looking back, not just to look back, right? We're looking back because there are lessons we can learn from the past that we can take us as we move forward. So with that, as we close out the evening, I'd like to give some thank yous, and then Maya's gonna have some next steps. So stick around for the next steps, because that's why we're here. But thank you so much to Self Help Graphics, to Amy Sanchez, Arteaga, and Misael Diaz, yes. Please thank you to the Jamie's American National Museum and a staff, to the Centenary Church group who is helping with safety and security, and all the organizing groups and speakers, performers, and of course, volunteers. Yes. So, what can you do? This is not a one-time event or protest. We are committed to continuing to protest Fort Sill and support immigrant rights. And we have specific projects, actions, and activities you can be involved with right now. So, starting off, Nikkei Progressives is fundraising to provide backpacks and supplies to those recently released from custody. Um, sign up with their immigration committee at the table that's over there um, at the entrance of, the, uh, of Janum. Um, there will be a pilgrimage to Crystal City, Texas, and action at Delhi Detention Center, October 31st, November 3rd. There's quite a few things here. Give me uh, a second. July 11th, um, Janum will be having a public conversation with George Takei and Karen Ishizuka, uh, Ishizuka at the, on the use of uh, co the word concentration camps. Um, check the Janum website, details forthcoming. Susan Hayase from Nikkei Resistor San Jose has sent Nikkei Progressives uh, two, uh, two different things you can help out with, a petition to not open Fort Sill and a letter writing campaign to support two specific bills, shutting down child prison camps and keeping families together. And both of those can again be found at the, the uh, Nikkei Progressives table. And I believe and then Suru for Solidarity will be having a protest action in May 2020, bringing I believe it's more than 20,000 students now um, to the White House protest. Yes, 125,000 to the White House protest of, and lobby Congress to change immigration, immigration pol immigrant policies. And finally, specific things you can do right now around right here, like Sean said, um, talk to the folks around you. Talk to the folks at the tables to learn how to get involved. Sign our email list, lists to get more information. Sign the Nikkei Progressives petitions. Check out the activity tables all over there. Record messages with our resident Plus Lab artists, Cognate, Collect, uh, Cognate Collective and Tracy Katakuriyama. Make prints with self-help graphics. And finally, write resolutions on uh, the wall of solidarity. Is there something else? But, but, um, I think that's it. So with that, that was a lot. That was a lot. A lot. So I'm going to invite you to take a moment, plan your feet on the ground, process all of that, think about what you're going to do next, think about who you're going to report back to in your own community, whether it's your family, your coworkers, your friends, whether you're going to post on Facebook or Instagram, how you're going to spread this information to make sure that we are all doing the work that we can and that we are all together in that. So just take a moment to process that. Hashtag. Do we have a hashtag? Never again. never again is now. Yes, so never again is now is connected to a larger national movement that's happening. I want to do mm. Don't look away. Mm. So with that, we're going to close out the evening. I'm going to ask you to repeat after me one last time. Never again is now. Never again is now. One more time. Never again is now. Louder, never again is now. Never again is now. One last time, never again is now. Never again is now. Woo, thank you all so much for being here this evening. Please make some connections. Please check out the tables. Please introduce yourself to somebody new. Please get home safely. And most of all, please do not look away. Please take action now. Thank you. Thank you.